This is a GVG110 control panel um, controlling a ATM as you've seen in past videos. What you see here I can also do with the GVG100, it's pretty much the same. Um, but today we're going to talk about using part of the switcher to control the CCU uh, portion of the ATM. Now I'm currently just using an ATM TVS. If I go down to um, the camera icon down here, we click on that and then uh, this will show you six camera CCU because there's only six inputs. So you can have um, cameras um, on um, on there, um, mainly the Blackmagic Studio cameras, but I'm also working on an interface to be able to use this same control both on the software control panel and on the GVG to control third-party cameras, um, whatever features they have available to be controlled, including um, a little outboard iris control which will again be able to be controlled by the, the software. And currently way over there, you probably can't see it, but there's a couple of um, studio cameras um, and they're all running through a um, an ATM um, fiber um, studio fiber interface um, along with um, other cameras that I have running the, um, the camera converters. Um, so just quickly getting to the point here, uh, what we do for uh, CCU control is that we, we basically use this section of the panel here, just down through there, the, the 10 buttons, these three knobs here, buttons over here, the joystick, uh, and some buttons over here. Um, they've done it so it's pretty logical, or it should be pretty logical. Um, to, to actually use them in CCU mode, you have to um, first of all ensure that we're on color one two mode um, by just selecting the uh, you hit the button until we're on there. And once we're on color one two mode, um, that mode is mainly just used for controlling um, the background um, hues, uh, chroma, and um, luminance of the background generators for generators one and two. And also, uh, it's these buttons here are used for doing the Casper CG stuff, which I've done in a previous video. Um, now to, to enable the CCU to be controlled, we have to enable the positioner button. That's the positioner button there, and now that's turned this whole section here into CCU control. Um, and the very basic um, operation of the CCU control um, is um, we use the, the joystick, um, the x-axis for doing the iris up and down, we use the y-axis for doing the black levels uh, up and down. Um, we use the pattern buttons 1, 2 and 3 to do the blacks, gammas and gains. Um, we use the, um, uh, what do I call that knob? The bevel knob will do the overall, the RGB and Y um, gains simultaneously. Um, over here we use the hue, uh, y up and uh, lift knobs to do red, green and blue, only when we're in the blacks, gammas and gains. Uh, and then we have um, other uh, functions. We use um, the audio button to step through the uh, gain. There's the gains here. Uh, when we have the reverse button on the panel selected, it'll do the um, shutter. Uh, and the symmetry knob will do the um, color temperature or the degrees Kelvin. Um, the softness button uh, will do the uh, focus of the camera and then in, used in conjunction with the shift and softness it'll, it'll uh, select auto focus. Now um, we do have some e extra functions here if we open up our CCU control panel. Um, we'll just use this one here when you go into what they call the DaVinci mode. Um, there are some other adjustments down here. Um, which are these four adjustments here. Now they're controlled, um, the border adjustment will control the RGB, Y RGB, that's the, that's the selection for the color space in which you're doing the um, color grading with. So you can either do it in RGB or Y RGB. And then we have um, the hue button 
uh, the hue knob when none of the uh, patterns are selected will uh, give you control over the hue adjustment itself. Um, and the Y suppress knob again while no patterns are selected will give you control of the saturation and of course the last one the lift knob while none of the patterns are selected will give you control of the contrast. Um, now to actually select which camera you're controlling we use the preview bus here so whatever is selected on the preview bus is what the CCU controls will adjust. And the reason for that being is that if you have a look at the um, the um, multi-view display, you've got preview bus, which is which is as I said we're using to um, to do our CCU adjustments. It's sitting next to the program row, so we can at any time see what's on the program row, and then accordingly adjust exposures and colours and blacks and whatever to the cameras on the um, on the program row. And subsequently, you're using the same monitors phosphorus, so you're not um, trying to compensate for different phosphors and screens and that. I mean, this is the simplest possible mode, but on um, on ATM 1MEs and 2MEs, where um, you have aux buses, um, the software will be extended to to actually use an aux bus in there. Then you can put um, scopes and whatever on um, while you're doing your adjustments in, in a more professional environment. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to be doing for my setup, I have uh, for my TVS kit, I actually have a um, 12x24 Blackmagic Video Hub, and I'm going to be using that to control the CCU monitoring, um, which is a bit tricky, but um, at the moment I haven't done that. But um, this is the simplest possible mode for use with the, the TVS, and of course you can use the same um, setup for um, the bigger ones if you don't particularly want to use ox buses and stuff like that. Um, so just very simply I'm just going to show you uh, as I said the um, joystick up and down is the exposure so if I um, do the exposure here um, you'll see up here the exposure is dropping down I'm just holding the, the joystick all the way down and if I push it up it's going to be controlling the exposure up and um, so normally you would just be doing minuscule adjustments um, on here as I'm adjusting the exposure, you can actually see the value of the exposure um, is showing on the, the readout, so that's maximum exposure. Um, and we, as we go down, it can go down as well. So that's a, a quick way of getting exposure matching between what's online and what's on the preview row. Um, and um, with the, the black level, the black level moves the X, the, the Y axis. And um, as, I, as I move it down, you can actually see it over here. That's the black moving down. And black moving up, and if you have a look at the, um, uh, the pictures up here, you'll see the blacks have gone up, blacks have gone down, um, and um, it's we call it, well, they call it pedestal, I call it pedestal, um, but it's also black. So you can see it's also displaying the value. So if you just want to reset the pedestal back to normal, you just set it back to zero there. Um, Another feature that I haven't mentioned, but it should be worthwhile mentioning now, is that there's the reverse find button over here is actually used to do course adjustments. So if you need to do, um, I mean, it's set up so it's in normal mode, it does fine adjustments because you're only doing very fine adjustments. But if you want to do massively big jumps, you just turn the reverse line, reverse button on, and then everything becomes in course mode. Um, now, I'll just show you with, with the. Um, I'm just going to show you, say, adjusting the blacks, for instance. Um, as I said, you select the pattern one as blacks, pattern two as gammas, and pattern three as gains. And as you can see, you can only ever have one selected at the same same time, so you can only ever do one adjustment. So, there's two ways you can do the adjustment of the color. Uh, you can either use the joystick because now that we've got a pattern selected, that no longer is iris black level. It's now um, going to be uh, color well, as we can see up here in the color well. And as I um, as I uh, come back here a bit, as I move the um, the joystick up, you can see the color well. The color well is moving. Um, so I can I can use um, a form of Da Vinci color correction using the the good old fashioned joystick on the um, on the GVG panel. And of course, if you have a look up here, you can see you can see all the colors are all changing. Um, uh, around the color wheel. 
Now, at any time, and this is going to be a bit difficult if I'm going to spread my finger out, if you hold your finger on the shift button, well, I can't do it, it's too far away. If you hold your finger on the shift button while moving the joystick, it centers everything. In fact, it resets it as a, as a reset. Um, uh, just speaking of reset, uh, in any mode, let's just turn that off. In any mode, if you hold your finger on the shift button, I'll do it with one hand, and hit the position button, it will, while the position button's on, it will reset everything. And now it's, everything's back to normal. No, no change, everything's back to unity of everything. So you can get totally get screwed up if you're um, tweaking knobs haphazardly and all of a sudden your camera's going to look crap. And you can just do that, hit the um, shift position button and everything will reset back to normal. Um, another way, besides using the joystick, and again we're going to select say blacks, uh, we can actually use the uh, these three knobs here to do red, green and blue um, of the individual colours. And as you can see over here, I'm moving it. And you can see it's only moving a little bit. The reason for that is because we're in fine mode. And of course, if you actually have a look on the camera that I'm adjusting, you'll actually see the very fine adjustments as uh, as I'm turning the knob. But if I actually hit the, um, the reverse, which is the fine button, you, you now see the movements are a lot larger. And again, you can um, use the um, select button to reset the pot. So if the if the knob's all the way one way, and you want to take it even more. You just hold your finger on the yeah, the enter button, and then turn the knob back, and then you can continue turning turning the knob. Um, and as you can see, there it is. They're changing. That's just doing the red. Um, I can do the the blue. Um, it's doing the blue. And I'm just doing the green now. And so I was doing the green, now I'm doing the blue. Okay. Don't be confused. But anyhow, so, so they're the three colours. And as, you, as I said, we're just using the blacks. At any time, again, if you hold your finger on the shift button while turning any knob, it will reset the value to zero. Which is pretty much the same as... Um, so you can individually set a, a value back to zero. Um... Or you can, um, you can, as I said before, you can set the whole lot back to zero. Um, I need to set everything back to zero there. And uh, I'll just quickly show you the gammas. So here we are doing gammas. Um, there's a gamma something there. Just turn this, we're using the, um, the joystick for a moment. Reset. Um, and then we can do the, um, the gains as well. As the game's moving around. Now, <clears throat> um, I, I won't show you the contrast, but I'll, I'll just quickly give you. So, so just to do these uh, extra controls, I've just turned the pattern uh, one to three off, so we're not actually controlling an individual black um, gamma or gains. And say um, using the lift, I can turn the contrast up and down. Uh, and, I'm, and again, the uh, course fine will, will work. And again, using the holding down the shift button while turning the knob, we'll, we'll reset it back to um, back to normal. There's me turning the knob and holding shift and turning the knob, puts it back to back to um, its default setting, which is 50%. And it's the same with um, with saturation and um, with the hue control. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned before, you've got the the RGB control, which is the border. Um, now, the, the other thing I just quickly want to talk about, because I'm running over again, is I just wanted to talk about the um, uh, auto, the sorry, the save and load. You can actually um, have um, ten uh, stored um, CCU adjustments for for each camera. Well, sorry, there's ten all up, of which you can then put into any one of the cameras. So to do a save. Um, which is all we have to do is we um, just press the so if I want to save that setup I just press the um, emem load save button and then I press any ridges that I want to want to put it in now I've got already got some things saved in there so I'm just going to say let's put it into register number five and as I do that uh, it's now saved and then it exits the um, uh, the load save mode now to actually load um, is all I need to do is hold my finger on the shift button and it's a bit tricky um, shift and then um, load save and um, this time the um, um, the emem light is flashing 
and now I can pick any one of 10 registers. Um, I, I've got a default setting here, I'm say register 1, and if I just put it up here and press register 1, uh, you can see now everything's um, gone back to normal, and um, it's uh, put all the colours and everything back to normal. Now load save will not um, change iris shutter. Um, what else we've got? And colour temperature, because sometimes you might need those. Um, so that's basically the CCU control. And as I said, I um, I will be releasing a um, a, a little um, box that you'll be able to plug in and hook up to your third-party camera, uh, which will control the iris, which is probably one of the biggest things you need to control. And uh, as most cameras have um, lenses that have iris rings on them with them. Um, um, a geared tooth. Well, then we just put a little motor on there to drive the um, the iris ring, and um, and everything's hunky dory. So there it is, a quick uh, run through. Incidentally, very shortly I'll be starting to make the proper videos using a bit more professional techniques than a an iPhone, etc. Good night.